Hello again Stroke Club, today I'm bringing you my early access impressions from Baldur's Gate 3 uh, after the early access soft launches, I like to call such launches. Um, the game uh, is in early access since the 6th of October. Uh, and uh, I've been playing uh, in co-op with my buddies, I've been playing and streaming uh, myself play solo with my first playthrough and now that I'm done with my first playthrough I am finally ready to give my early access impressions and share my thoughts and provide you some information about all sorts of things such as the character creation, races, sub-races, classes, sub-classes, such as uh, the camp system, the companions, uh, such as the combat in the game and all sorts of things. Keep in mind I'm not a D&D specialist, um, in all means I'm just... Uh, an amateur who loves playing such games every now and then. I've never played a, a, a tabletop D&D game, so I cannot compare this to a D&D tabletop game. And there's probably other people who have made such content who are specialists in the genre. So, uh, me as an RPG fan, uh, I'm giving you my perspectives from my point of view. So remember to watch other people's content to see what uh, their point of view from their perspective is because it's going to be vastly different than mine in most cases. So I hope you enjoy my thoughts. I hope you enjoy the content I've provided for you. This is going to be a little bit of an extended longer video than I wanted it to. But then I started recording and the, the things I wanted to talk about and show kept piling and piling and piling up. So. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, first things first I'm gonna start with uh, the main screen and the character creation and the options uh, and customization of those so the first thing you will notice when you go into the game most likely will be opening the options and I'd like to show everyone what's available in the options I'm not gonna talk about all the options just gonna show you the gameplay options, you've got save options, dialogue options, UI and user options, as well as camera options, bottom bar options and Twitch integrations. Uh, key bindings, uh, we're not gonna go through those, but there's a what, uh, there's just a what that um, allows you to play the game by pressing certain uh, hotkeys uh, and optimize your playthrough time. Then there's the video graphics options. Um, there's uh, VSync, frame rate caps, um, of course, uh, there's overall quality from custom, very low, well, well, medium, high, ultra, and then there's the general ones, model quality, etc. And the lighting, um, the post processing, so a lot of customization, uh, definitely a good amount, and then there's audio options. So you've got, you've got things to do. So now let's move on to the important uh, things and that's the gameplay, the character crea creation and so on. I'd like to first talk about the um, character creation and um, let's start a new game so you can see what it is. I'm gonna try and skip this video so you don't uh, get spoiled. Basically you have your origin, your race, your appearance, your class, your skills and your abilities. Tell me. Uh, and I'm not sure how to go back, probably like this. Um, so, as origin, you have uh, right now only custom available. You can select some of the already created heroes later on, but not in early access. So you will be able to play as a Sterion, as Lazo or Wazo. I'm not sure how to pronounce her name. Sorry, uh, Gail, Shadowheart, or Will. And I've not seen Will. Uh, I'm not sure whether he even shows up in the early access, but I completed the early access and I even did some extra side quests and I still couldn't find Will. So maybe he's not an early access character, not an act one character. So you've got your character name, of course, and you've got a background. So you've got Acolyte, which is insight and religion proficiency, uh, Charlatan, which is um, deception and slay of hand proficiency, criminal, which is deception and stealth, um, entertainer with acrobatics and uh, performance, folk hero which is animal handling and survival proficiency, uh, guild artisan which is insight and persuasion, then you've got the noble with history and persuasion, hermit with medicine and religion, outlander with athletics and survivor, arcana history and history for the sage, uh, the sailor is athletics and perception and the soldier is athletics and intimidation and then there's urchin which is lay of hand and stealth proficiency. And um, that kind of uh, are those. So 
Of course you've got male and female options for each and then there's the races elf, tiefling, drow, uh, human, gityanki, dwarf, half elf and halfling and uh, I will now say more about each of those uh, races. You can see the halflings are white, food halflings are stealthy but social, traveling all over Faerun to make names for themselves. So the halflings have the white food halfling and then the strong heart halfling. The strong heart you can see, legends say Dwarven Blood uh, gave strong hearts their hardiness, resistance to poison and um, wellspring of endurance. But instead of reading this, let's just look at the abilities. This sub race trait gives it um, naturally stealthy, base ratio speed and charisma. Um, then this one is strong heart resilience, base ratio speed and constitution. Uh, then for the half elves you've got the high half elf which gives you base ratio speed. Then you have wood half elf which gives you base ratio, ratio speed and also mask of the wild. And then you have Grow Half Elf, which uh, is just a base ratio speed, but you have, I think, a different cantrip um, to choose from. Uh, and yeah, each of those allows you to customize. You have two ability improvements as a Half Elf. Two ability improvements um, which are pretty nice. Um, so let, let's move on to the Dwarf. The Dwarf, there's Gold Dwarf, Shield Dwarf, um, and the Gold is Dwarven Toughness base ratio speed and uh, plus one wisdom whereas the shield dwarf is uh, base ratio speed plus two strength uh, light armor proficiency and medium armor proficiency you can see the rest remains the same as race features um, I'm seeing one slight change one slight change maybe one two three four five six seven 2, 3, 4, 5, okay, there's no change, it's just this text being longer. So now Git Yankee, that's actually what I selected for my first playthrough for my main. I wanted to make a Git Yankee um, tank uh, that is uh, Eldritch Knight. Actually, I didn't think about whether it's going to be Eldritch Knight or not, I just wanted a tank. But um, yeah, this, this seems like an interesting uh, race. They've got intelligence and strength, they've got light and medium armor, they've got short slot, sword long sword great sword proficiency so you want to be playing with swords uh, with those although the game has been given uh, she has been giving me some hammers and axes uh, of what through my playthrough um, which I actually liked uh, using a lot so definitely a nice race it's kind of like orcs but definitely much more different yet uh, you can kind of uh, call it the orcs uh, of um, of the races here because you don't have actual orcs you've got git yankee and they're a nice race definitely uh, had fun playing it then there's the human uh, typical standard uh, plus one in everything uh, and then there's the draw which has uh, the two types of draws seldrin draws and what sworn draws uh, and you can see the sub race features don't really uh, don't really show us anything. They're just the race features changing, um, and I think there's no no single change here. But those are proficient with rapier, short sword, uh, hand crossbow, uh, and have dark vision. So they're probably very nice for rogues as a choice. Uh, then we have tieflings. Tieflings, uh, you've got the Asmodeus tiefling which gets sub-race traits of uh, speed, intelligence plus one, charisma plus two. And then you've got the Mephistopheles tieflings, which is uh, racial speed uh, base, intelligence plus one, charisma plus two. And then Zario tiefling, which is strength plus one, charisma plus two, uh, along with the base racial speed. Um, all of them get the hellish resistance um, and from dark and get, get dark vision. So uh, there's a lot of uh, variety of what you can do with those. You can have some mages maybe, you can have some um, druids, some I mean priests, clerics, or you can make some sort of a weird rogue or a tank, um, hybrid, I mean there's a lot of choices I guess. Then there's elves, there's high elves, wood elves, 
um, and the sub race traits for the high elf are intelligence plus one with pace ratio speed and then um, the wood elf gets fleet of foot your base walking speed is increased uh, is 10.5 meters then mask of the wild you were raised to blend into your natural surroundings you gain proficiency in stealth and then uh, wisdom so there's interesting uh, things to do here now if you go into appearance um, there's a lot of customization and your screen you would be seeing a short um, um, montage that the developer supported in their blog but i'm gonna quickly try and show you some of the things you have the voice you have the head so if you go into into the zoom in you've got the head like this you can get preset head options you can have a lot of hairstyle options a lot of hairstyle options let's just show you like that um, I'm gonna quickly show you some of the female and then the male hairstyle options I think those are available on every race and so maybe there's gonna be some differences but I haven't um, deeply dived into this to see if there's a lot of um, customization based on the race uh, in the hairstyle whether is if there's uh, whether if there's hairstyles that only apply to a certain race so let's check the male hairstyle options let's uh, check like that and that's the head i want the hairstyle maybe like this to see better so you've got options um, and plenty of them and then there's eye colors and hair colors and you've got a vast amount of uh, things you can get but I think certain races have certain hairstyles because I've noticed some of the things I had on my Git Yankee uh, were not available on this one so probably that's the case or maybe maybe I was mistaken but yeah uh, a lot of options uh, for hair and everything so yeah there's uh, hair colors a bunch of them there's tattoos a bunch of them there's tattoo intensity and you can select the colors and everything and there's also makeup which applies both to male and female characters you can put makeup on all of them and there's a bunch of options there as well and you can also select the colors and the density intensity although strangely enough I can't scroll more so hopefully that's all the options um, now for the classes um, you've got six classes and each of those has at least two subclasses. The cleric uh, allows you to get the subclass at level one. Some of the other um, classes get their subclass at two or three. So for example the cleric is life domain, light domain, trickery domain, life, uh, light and trickery. Those are the three subclasses uh, of the cleric. Then there's the deity. You can select what what you what you gear or what you gear um, Vakit Elistre Selun um, Shar Tempest Tyr Bane Helm Mirko Ilmeter Mistra Ogma Kelemvor Bao Moradin Korewon Varitian Garo Glittergold um, Yondawa and we're back to what so you see there's a lot of options and the subclass features would give you certain spells based on what you select uh, so there's definitely a lot of things a lot of things you can you can get see this subclass for example gives you heavy, heavy armor proficiency disciple of life domain of spells uh, whereas um, the other one only gave us domain of spells of trickery um, and if we get the light domain it gives us warding flare and domain of spells now let's uh, dive into the fighter the fighter uh, when I when I made the fighter I was given the option to go um, more of a warrior type of style uh, or to go eldritch knight and I went eldritch knight on my first playthrough 
Um, but yeah, it was it was definitely nice. The Ranger, uh, I haven't played with the Ranger. My characters were Wizard and Rogue uh, from the team, and uh, I also had a Cleric in the team. Uh, so for Ranger, I don't have any idea what the subclasses will be, but um, I'm assuming um, there will be interesting ones. And you can see some class features here: strength saving, uh, dex saving, saving, light me uh, and medium, shield proficiency, simple and martial. So when you go into rogue, you've got light, simple, hand, uh, crossbow, longsword, rapier, short sword, dexterity. And for the rogue, uh, there's thief, and uh, there was another one which I can't remember, but definitely um, uh, interesting choices. I decided to go for the thief. Um, there's the warlock. I've not seen what Warlocks can do, um, but you've got subclass as, as the Fiend, the Great Old One, the, uh, which is the two different subclasses. So, the subclass proficiency with the Fiend is Dark One's Blessing. When you reduce a hostile creature to zero hit points, this gift from your patron grants you Charisma Modifier plus level hit points, which is pretty nice. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be an interesting one to try as a playthrough. You can again customize your cantrips and spells. And then there's the wizard. With the wizard, you don't select the subclass right now. Eventually later you will select it. Um, and there's gonna be interesting uh, choices of spells and um, um, of uh, cantrips that you can use. You can see class features, spell slots, and walked intelligence, saving throw proficiency, wisdom saving throw proficiency, dagger, dart, sling, quarter staff, and light crossbow proficiencies. So there's interesting ways to play those classes. So once you've selected the class um, and everything, you go into skills, uh, and then you have options uh, for for the skill proficiencies, such as arcana, history, insight, in investigation, medicine, religion. Then there are skills without proficiencies that you can see, but let's let's say for example we change the race to for example halfling. No, let's say tiefling. Tiefling with uh, um, with this one for example, and um, let's just select uh, something like a ranger. Then let's go into into this. You can select a favored enemy, bounty hunter, keeper of the veil. Vale, Mage Breaker, Ranger Knight, Sanctified Stalker, The Natural Explorer, Beast Tamer, Urban Tracker, Wasteland Wanderer, Cold Fire or Poison. And um, then let's go into skills here. Then you've got Animal Handling, uh, Athletics, Insight, Investigation. So skills with proficiency and without proficiency, um, the choices would change based on the race and the class obviously. Eventually as you level up you might be able to do some changes to those. Um, then um, you've got the point by system. Minimum is 8 points. So you've got a total of 27 points and um, you might want to look into point by to, to figure out the to figure out exactly how it works, how many points each uh, each level, each stat point costs. So you can see from this one you get uh, minus one, minus one, then plus one. Uh, plus zero, I mean, plus zero, plus zero, then this is plus one, plus one, plus one, then there's plus two um, points, so it costs two to, to buy. So you can make something like 15, 15, 8, 8, 8, uh, which is your um, typical standard kind of way of uh, how certain people do it. I did that for my main warrior, but yeah, you just select the points you want the way you want them. Uh, you can use recommended, which gives you some sort of uh, interesting choices, um, interesting uh, allocations. And once you're done, you can just venture forth. And once you venture forth, you're gonna see the cinematic. And I'm gonna cut the video here and then uh, show you what... Oh, actually, let's not cut it here. Let's uh, venture forth and then show you about um, who do you dream of, who attracts you. I'm, try I'm gonna try and not spoil it. But um, this is an important part of the game um, and um, this is a person that you're uh, in a way connected to. Without spoiling how, you have to select that person, what, it, uh, what the person looks like, what race and sub-race the person um, 
is and and yeah you can just uh, pick whatever uh, is um, suitable for you and that's it you just select the appearance you don't select anything other than the appearance the rates and the celebrate so once you venture forward uh, I'm gonna cut the video here so you don't spoil yourself and now this is the start of the game I'm not gonna talk too much about um, the start I'm gonna try to not spoil the story but spoiler alert you could skip to the next segment if you want to skip some of the spoilers uh, I'm gonna quickly talk about what the story is like uh, well you find yourself in a um, mind flayer ship uh, notioid ship and you've been experimented on uh, and uh, this ship is kind of about to burst or crash you can see it's uh, something's happening it's all uh, under attack by uh, certain things I'm not gonna spoil too much but uh, um, yeah things are, are burning and you're trying to kind of uh, survive to get away from this place survive it and see what can be done um, uh, you're gonna be meeting certain uh, people certain uh, things uh, along the way you can uh, fight your way through it but uh, in the end your goal is to, to kind of try and survive and uh, maybe escape this place without spoiling too much and eventually once uh, you survive this uh, provoke um, then you are on the mainland uh, or on some sort of land and from there you're trying to to get rid of something um, that um, that is uh, that has infested you and your teammates. I'm trying to not spoil too much of the story, but uh, it's kind of inevitable. If I want to talk about the story, I have to spoil cer certain things. So yeah, you're infested by some some parasite, and uh, you're trying to get rid of that parasite. Otherwise, if you don't, something very bad is gonna happen. And it's not just you; it's uh, almost everyone who has been in this ship and has been um, experimented on. So you will meet other people who are infested just the same way you are and you will have to you will have to figure out a way to get the parasite and the whole of act one's main story is about figuring out how to get rid of the parasite and um, whether you can or cannot i'm not gonna sell and uh, say and spoil it uh, i'm gonna let you enjoy it uh, but uh, hopefully you enjoy that part now next I will talk about the combat. Now let's talk about combat. I've picked up a battle, hopefully it doesn't spoil you too much. But I've picked up a battle here with uh, an NPC. And let's talk about the combat. First you've got uh, things that cost action and bonus points. Things that uh, cost only action and things that cost um, action and speed. Uh, so you have to kind of consider the bonus section, the actions and the speed. And there's things that give you extra movement speed for the duration of the turn. Turn. Um, there's things that allow you to jump, disengage, uh, which allows you to, if you're surrounded on a ranged target and you want to get away, it allows you to do that. Or if you just want to close in the distance and jump over obstacles, the jump is a great choice. In fact, jump is one of the best things um, uh, I've found about the combat system um, that um, that might have uh, been missing in other games in the genre if you've played certain others. I mean, I really love it. It's so useful, not just in combat, but outside of combat. Then um, you've got different uh, attacks based on your class. For example, let's, uh, let's uh, move this guy over here and let's just do something like this. And there's, without revealing too much and spoiling too much, you're gonna have some sort of special powers that eventually uh, you will unlock with the story. And those special powers would allow you to do certain things. And certain characters uh, um, also have uh, certain things that are specific to what they are. Um, like, uh, you probably noticed this vampire bite and we know from trailers and stuff uh, I hope I'm not spoiling this too much with you but we know uh, there's vampires in the game and vampires well they have to drink blood so you can see this guy did what he was supposed to and it's definitely a, a fun fun um, part of the game the combat and I really enjoy it so there's many ways you can do, you can throw items, you can throw everything in the game can be thrown. You can decide to throw a skull at an enemy, let's just show you. I'm gonna flunk this shit and um, 
and throw a skill. You see there's 9% uh, chance to succeed. You can throw bombs, you can throw barrels, you can throw... Uh, I can throw a plate at him. If I want to, I can just put a plate here and I can throw it. I mean, it's not gonna hit because 9% chance, but... Um, you can throw a lot of stuff. You can even throw uh, things like those tanks. Uh, if you throw such an item, it will create a surface on the ground like this and you can explode that surface later. Uh, actually, this would hurt my characters, but let's show you how my characters can get hurt, I guess. And yeah, I can end the turn. He's actually probably gonna explode this himself and you can see attacks of opportunity are a thing. So he moved away. He's gonna do attacks of opportunity. He used something like Hunter's Mark and look at that. He exploded this and now my hero is downed. This is a perfect example to show you what happens when someone is downed. When someone is downed, you can... Uh, it's not over. They can roll for saving throws. Uh, and if they roll three times for saving throws and succeed, they get up. If they roll three times and, uh, and fail three times, they, uh, they die. You might end up rolling more than three times, because uh, uh, it, it might be five times of you rolling, like one saving, one non-saving, another non-saving, another saving, and another non-saving, and then you're dead. But once you get three, three successful or three failed, you die. If someone hits you, uh, it counts as a negative uh, roll. And you can get someone up by using help. That brings them up immediately. And uh, of course you have potions, you have a lot of other things you can do. You can see now here we can use jump maybe to, to get um, over there and position ourselves. But in general it's definitely very fun how certain things have been made. See this guy can go here, engage this, uh, slash him. And then there are certain things like action search that gives you uh, once per short rest. Um, to be able to push yourself through the limits and get, some, get another action. Uh, another action that you can do. And since certain attacks are counted as action only, you can attack again with those. Um, short rest is over here. Um, it allows you to regenerate um, certain things that require a short rest, like skills, spell slots, etc. But there are certain things that, that you can only do once per long rest. And for long rest you have to go to your camp. And uh, our camp would be the next thing we are going to cover. Uh, what you can do in the camp and um, your companions. So uh, I'm not gonna finish this battle. I'm gonna stop this and we can move straight to the camp. I hope everything was um, clear. Scroll of Revivify is also something you can use to revive. Fallen comrades, uh, fallen uh, companions, uh, party members. So uh, even if they die, it's not over. Uh, you can rest them during or after the battle with Scroll of Revivify. But there are certain mechanics without revealing too much. There are gonna be a mechanic where a certain hero would need to be revived within um, X number of hours or days. Um, otherwise something bad will happen. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, you have to be careful not to not to end uh, end up having zero scrolls of revivify, and then not being able to revive that specific character. So without spoiling too much, let's go to the camp. Now here we are at the campsite, uh, and at the campsite you can find various things such as companions, NPCs that uh, that join you on your journey not just the characters you can put in your party and you can find certain objects that uh, you can send to your camp. Eventually you're gonna have some pets and the developers have already teased an owlbear pet. Uh, in my playthrough I didn't encounter it but I did encounter the start quest. I probably just uh, messed it up and I couldn't get enough information but there, there are places that I never explored. Uh, you can look at uh, my map here, actually that's the camp so you can see it. Uh, but yeah, there are certain things that you can put in your camp. For example, every item, you can click on it and you can click send to camp. And it goes somewhere. I don't know exactly where, but it goes somewhere, um, that, uh, that item. And yeah, there's definitely a lot of, uh, a lot of things. So let's uh, talk about uh, characters. I don't see any crafting station, but you do have a workbench which is a crafting station, in a way. Um, 
Although I'm not sure why I can't use this one, but normally when I find a workbench in in the open in in the in the cities, I can use it. But yeah, let's talk about companions. You've got um, you've got a cleric, Shadow Heart, and she's a trickstery domain cleric. And uh, with her, uh, you have um, of course, like with every other uh, every other character, you have the option to f choose one companion to romance so uh, once you start romancing one character you would notice and that the others already know about this and the, the game devs seem to have made it that uh, you you can only have one there's monogamy um, uh, i think in the game i don't know of a way to romance two characters at the same time and have a relationship with both. Maybe you can romance one character and then decide that you don't want to romance this one and then maybe move on to another one and maybe that would work. But I don't think, or at least I suspect that you're not going to be able to romance two characters at the same time um, to, to kind of be uh, juggling two, two romances. Uh, you can see there's different options to talk to about, but I don't want to spoil you, so uh, once you go to her, there's definitely a lot of things you can do, and whenever you do something, I'm just going to show you something, um, you get, uh, whenever you do choices in the game, you have, um, you're going to see some indications here, whether a hero approves or disapproves. So I'm gonna skip certain things. I'm just gonna try and uh, find out one of those options. Well, I like night orchids, and it's nothing to laugh at. Fine. What's on your mind? Um. So just a moment. I'm gonna try. We go our separate. And before you. See, uh, she disapproves. This is what I'm talking about. So as you as you talk to heroes, you get a disapproval approval, and this disapproval approval rating, you can see over here approval um, the relationship is fair characters trust in player character is variable uh, at medium and yeah the more the more you do something uh, the more this changes so certain heroes um, would keep uh, agreeing or disagreeing uh, as you do certain choices you see I'm high with this guy with her I'm on medium and with this guy I'm on neutral so um, there's another character here. Let's talk about um, let's talk about the next character. Let's talk about um, Asterion. Uh, I'm gonna talk to him with my main. He is, as you've noticed, uh, his teeth and stuff. He's the vampire. I'm not gonna spoil you too much about his story, but um, yeah, with him you you can have a good rogue. At least uh, I liked building him as a thief rogue. He seemed like um, the perfect uh, one to choose for this. And um, uh, now the, the third one you probably will encounter uh, will be Gale. Uh, and yeah, he's a wizard. He's a wizard and um, you can see in promotional art, uh, promotional art and stuff like that that he has lightning and and thunder and shock uh, as his team. And there's something very special about him. I'm not gonna uh, spoil and reveal it, but um, the, the way this character survives and grows um, is very different from the others. And then there's um, Lazel or, or Wisel, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, who is a Git Yankee. So she is a um, Git Yankee. My main is actually Git Yankee on this playthrough as well. And um, she, just like you, is trying to get rid of uh, that parasite, and just like you, is trying to, to, to kind of survive. But she also wants to find her own people and reunite with them, and uh, that's what's driving her. She's very loyal to her queen, and um, you might use that to her advantage. Um, definitely something interesting um, uh, in that regard. She can be a decent tank. And since I made my main to be a tank, I kind of benched her, but I really wanted her on my team. I wish I could uh, convert her um, into a ranger, so probably starting with a ranger might be my second playthrough. Um, so I can maybe uh, bench the rogue and play as a ranger and have um, her as the tank, him as the wizard and uh, her as the cleric. 
Of course you can play as a cleric and bench uh, this cleric and then have um, warrior, wizard, rogue and you being the cleric, that's also a thing. I mean there's many many options. But uh, through those companions uh, and their classes and their subclasses uh, and, um, and your class and subclass you can make some sort of a party build. And um, again, you can romance them and there's a fifth character, Will, which as you saw in the character creation uh, is, um, is there, uh, he will exist, it's probably that mage with fire that we see in the promotional art. I'm assuming he's not an Act 1 hero and I'm assuming you meet him in Act 2 or Act 3, most likely Act 2. If he's in Act 1, I haven't met him yet so maybe uh, I missed a certain quest. Now let's... Uh, let's um, quickly show you what happens when you rest you when you rest you go back to to the mainlands sometimes there's gonna be some events that get triggered uh, without spoiling those and then you can um, do whatever you are about to do so I'm gonna show you the main maps or actually that's the under dark main map um, so this is the under dark main map um, and um, yeah, there's uh, it's a vast area. It's a vast area to explore, but I want to show you the proper main map. Let's go to to the first waypoint. You're gonna find overgrown ruins. So you can see this is the big uh, the big map um, where most of the action will happen in in this one. Most of the action here oversight, this is where we land, we crash and we start from here and uh, you're gonna be exploring a lot of things. Uh, you're gonna be encountering different um, checkpoints, waypoints and uh, different uh, parts of the story to do different things. That's also another character that uh, wasn't available on the character selection, which I'm assuming can join our team, uh, Karwach. Um, I'm not gonna spoil you and show you what, uh, what she is and uh, uh, what she looks like, but keep that in mind. Um, there's also other parts of the map which I can't show you right now, uh, but if I go here, um, for example over here to Mountain Pass, uh, I can um, access parts or a map that shows you the different uh, zones that would be part of the big picture of the, of the, of Act 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So it's kind of listing certain zones. So I think that's pretty much it about companions, about the party, about the camp. Um, next thing I would like to discuss is our main and side quest variety. As I said, the main quest is about um, getting rid um, of, um, of that parasite and uh, finding a way to save ourselves before it's too late. But there's a lot of side quests. There are side quests uh, to decide uh, the fate of a certain town. There are side quests um, to decide uh, what happens in a certain village to save some heroes. Um, there's also side quests where you might need to be a little bit more sneaky and infiltrate uh, a specific settlement of certain type of enemies without revealing uh, what. Uh, so there are so many side quests. There are side quests to explore certain dungeons and crypts and stuff like that. Uh, and in general a lot of things you can do. And you can see you can easily fast travel from one place to the other by just uh, selecting uh, just selecting uh, those waypoints here and that immediately just puts you to a different part of the map and I really like this, I really like this fast travel uh, I don't have to be next to a waypoint to fast travel um, but when I do fast travel I end up in, in a waypoint so uh, there's a lot of things that you can do um, there's also crafting in the game which might be bugged uh, or um, I've been reading a lot of comments about crafting but basically you need a certain item which is um, uh, a bark of a certain tree and once you have this uh, scissor tree bark uh, you can um, apparently create masterwork items. Uh, again I haven't uh, been able to do it and I've been reading comments and I couldn't figure out uh, how to craft this item, I think uh, probably the crafting interface is bugged or maybe I need two of those barks, not just one. Um, but uh, that's all the quest says, to find a sister tree bark and then you can master craft a weapon. Uh, speaking of items, uh, let's show you something about the items. You have white items, which are uh, I guess the base items, then you have the uncommon ones. 
uh, which are the green and then you have uh, rare items which are the the uh, blue ones i'm not sure whether there's going to be uniques like divinity original sin 2 uh, most likely there will be something uh, better than rare um, one grade higher i haven't found one yet uh, the master crafted might be something like that uh, this remains to be seen uh, you're gonna find a lot of different items um, uh, with a lot of different abilities you're gonna find um, certain NPCs selling items that you can only get there with special abilities that can only be found there uh, and you might wanna save your gold coins um, wisely and spend them wisely uh, to buy the things you want that would help your build shine more uh, other things that we might need to to speak about is uh, who this early access is a good fit for i think this early access will be a good fit for the hardcore fans the ones that uh, just want to enjoy the game even if it's in a rough state even if there's gonna be crashes or bugs or glitches or exploits uh, even if it's just act one and um, you can't uh, do certain choices um, when you create your hero you can't play with the story characters you can't play as shadow heart as your main or as um as gale as your main so even even if that's the case i still think uh, you're gonna enjoy it uh, and um, yeah it might be a little bit expensive for an early access game you're paying the full retail price of 60 dollars or 60 euro for for uh, the early access and that's why i'm saying it's only for the hardcore fans even then uh, there's over 70,000 players playing for the past few days as peak numbers on steam and that's just steam alone excluding uh, other um, other uh, platforms like uh, stadia or um, good old games so even then there's a nice following of uh, people who like the game and who think it's worth playing uh, and paying 60 bucks to play the game i'm one of those people i really enjoyed that and i'm gonna be playing and streaming myself playing some more playthroughs after i'm done with certain other things i've got planned uh, so i'm gonna be taking a short break um, uh, from streaming this game but that doesn't mean i'm not gonna make more content about it so i think the game really uh, would be worth it only if you think uh, you can spare the 60 bucks and if you really are so eager and teaching to play a game like Baldur's gate 3 in the meantime if you're looking for something similar divinity original sin 2 from the same developers uh, Varian studios is a great game with, where you can get the whole story um, for the full price you can pay you've got some dlc's expansions etc uh, with it uh, um, and updates and the game is very stable and good so if you haven't played Divinity Original Sin 2 maybe it's better to get that game played first enjoy it uh, play it until you're so bored and then maybe consider getting this game but I would strongly suggest getting the game if you're a hardcore fan if you've played Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 uh, and remember um, what the story is and um, just want to continue the story and uh, want to uh, have a game and that you can play in this uh, universe um, it's definitely a nice dnd game and uh, i definitely think a lot of people out there would enjoy it this is kind of my summary uh, overall the game visually is amazing you can just see the the graphics um, uh, on the faces the facial motion capture you can see how detailed it is. You can see some glitching, of course, with beards sticking out and things clipping uh, armor and so on. But visually, uh, visually, there's just some just find the some amazing ca motion capture that the they've done for the game. And this is one of the best parts of it uh, as pulling points for people who care about graphics. I personally would play this game even if it was 2D, uh, because it's just a great uh, it's just a great game. Uh, a great story, a uh, really fun story, gripping uh, from the beginning, the cinematics are amazing um, and just following the story of each of those characters is nice. So visually the game gets very good points from me, top points visually, top points for a variety of builds and classes with more classes coming, with more um, um, subclasses coming eventually but I think with early access that's kind of the limit of classes and subclasses we've got there's still 16 uh, total races and sub races which is super nice you still have a ton of classes and subclasses to pick from six classes all of each having multiple subclasses at least two 
So there's definitely good uh, good variety. And if you consider that you have four people in your team, uh, and all the classes and subclasses uh, each of those can get, you're getting a very very fun uh, playthrough and a very big uh, build diversity. So. Let me know what you think about the game, let me know whether you think 60 bucks uh, is worth spending on it right now or whether there's not enough. Um, I wouldn't uh, mind reading uh, all sorts of uh, opinions, negative or positive alike. If you'd like to get notified when I upload more content for RPGs and um, other types of wooter games, you can subscribe to my channel. Click on that bell button to not miss the notifications. Uh, thanks uh, for watching this video folks. Um, keep it cool. Until next time and goodbye from me.